Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Andrew Kirchhoff and this is my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new to the channel, I welcome you as well. I uh, hope you're here to stay and um, today we're going to be talking about the 2018 Fantasy Football Superflex Mock Draft. So I'm going to be partaking in a mock draft uh, in which I draft from a random position. Um, we're going to number generator what you know position I draft at and so on and so forth. It should be fun. It'll give you guys pretty good insight on uh, what I think you should be drafting in specific rounds later in the rounds in in, uh, in your super flex draft, so you kind of get an idea of the strategies that I like to specifically run. Um, before we go into that, I want to thank everybody uh, who continues to watch, support my channel. Uh, we're at 49 subs. If we can get one more subscription, we're at that big five zero, and uh, it'll set the tempo, and we'll continue to uh, keep going for more and more goals uh, throughout the. Uh, throughout the coming months of the NFL season. So, yeah, let's let's get right into it really quickly. Let me just go ahead and do this and this. Bada boom. Okay, hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back. As you can see on the screen, we're going to be doing a mock draft at fantasypros.com, which, in my opinion, is the best place to do a mock draft. Yes, you can technically go to, like, Yahoo, ESPN, and NFL.com and do a mock draft against live people. But to be honest, when I'm trying to record these videos, some people will draft in the first two rounds and leave, and then I gotta wait for a computer to draft. You know what I mean? I gotta wait some time. It'll take a while. Instead of Fantasy Pros, um, the computer will generate the picks and it'll be instant so that you're right there and you can go through this pretty quickly. It's pretty good to practice for those of you looking to do so. Anyway, it's uh, fantasypros.com. I've showed it in my first Superflex video, so if you haven't seen it, the, the, the link is up top. So, And I'll probably put it in the description of the uh, the video. Okay, so anyway, as I said, we're going to be doing a Superflex, right? One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end. Obviously, it's standard. Um, one regular flex position, one Superflex, a defense and a kicker, you know, whatever. And eight bench slots. Uh, we're going to go half point PPR, snake draft. And again, as I said, we're going to randomly generate a number, okay? So, again, I... The only numbers we can't pick is 5 and 9 because we've done that already as mock drafts, right? So we're going to go ahead. We're going to look right at the camera. We're going to wink at the camera. We're going to stop. 7. All right. There it is. We will be taking the 7th slot in the draft. So let's get it. Okay. So we're going to do this. It's a 12-team league. Bada boom. We'll get it going. And that's it. 2018, half-point PPR, snake, etc. Let's get right into it, okay? So what do I expect to be my first pick? Well, to be honest, I, ooh, okay. So let's see what's going on, right? The first couple picks in a super flex are kind of up in the air. There are people that might take quarterbacks. There are people that might leave Antonio Brown on the board. But anyway, so let's see what we've got here, okay? So as of right now, we've got the best two options, obviously Antonio Brown and Alvin Kamara on the board, right? So, let me think about this. Alvin Kamara is going to have his first four games of the season without the likes of Mark Ingram sitting next to him. And then you got the number one wide receiver in the NFL up for grabs at the seventh overall pick. Hmm. Let's see here. How do I want to approach this? Because, to be honest, I kind of want to have um, the points... Can they tell me how many points they scored last season? Because that would be really helpful. Um, no? Okay. But he had pretty good yards. Nine touchdowns, that's it? Mm. Okay. So to be honest, just off of looking at that, I'm going to go Alvin Kamara. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit different. A lot of people probably would have taken Antonio Brown at that spot, but I kind of want to just build running back at this point. Um, so Antonio Brown went off the board, obviously, and then Saquon Barkley uh, and three other quarterbacks, right? Russell Wilson, which is second best quarterback in fantasy because he run the ball and he throws touchdowns after touchdowns, which I think will go down this year because um, no more Jimmy Graham, no more Paul Richardson, and you know we'll, we'll see if there's any more targets left besides Doug Baldwin, who's ailing from an injury right now. Okay, second round. It started off with a Kareem Hunt for net run with Julio and Odell Beckham and Melvin Gordon, which I really wanted to come back to me. That's unfortunate. So as of right now, I'm looking at it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm taking Dalvin Cook. 
Um, you might be thinking, why are you taking Dalvin Cook? But uh, I like the idea and the upside of him. If you watch my video from yesterday, um, you kind of get better. Uh, you get a better idea of why I'm I'm taking Dalvin Cook. Obviously, I want to go with that stable running back situation, right? Um, Dalvin Cook, prior to getting injured last season, had two games of 20 plus touches. One with 22 touches, one with 27 in a game. Now that McKinnon is no longer with the Vikings, he will also be adopting the passing down situations. So I see Dalvin Cook, you know, as a good RB one with the ability to come up and and fight for that top five running back position, you know, assuming that some guys just don't perform this year, you know, Todd Gurley doesn't go completely crazy this coming season. Okay, so after that, Christian McCaffrey. Um, Christian McCaffrey in, at 2-7 is decent, but it is a half point PPR. So, you know, you might as well just take a, a wide receiver at that point. Um, like Keenan Allen or Michael Thomas, who was still on the board, but that's whatever the computer drafted. Um, AJ Green, okay. Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Devontae Freeman, uh, Devontae Adams. There he goes. There's the Devontae's. Um, Cam Newton, Kirk Cousins, my favorite quarterback this coming season, Kirk Cousins. Uh, Jarek McKinnon and Adam Thielen, okay. So, as of, you know, just looking at it right now, um, straight up, I am not going to go and reach for a quarterback at this point. Because the board is going to come right back to me. So I'm going to go ahead and sure up. Ooh. So here's here's the dilemma, right? Do I want to fit my third um, flex position with a Jordan Howard? Or do I want to start building my wide receiver core? Um, if I was to draft a wide receiver, I'd most likely draft T.Y. Hilton um, over Mike Evans. Because of the, um, the fact that Mike Evans isn't really a reception kind of a guy he's going to get like 75 catches a year he's going to get a good amount of touchdowns but ty hilton is going to catch the ball probably a hundred more than 100 times this coming season i think he'll have a better year than mike evans because of the quarterback difference um just straight up from that other than those two i wouldn't consider any of these other wide receivers so you know what we're going to change it up a little bit i think there's a deep um amount of wide receivers and I can just wait on them so I'm just gonna go with I'm gonna go with Jordan Howard so I'm gonna fill up three running backs right this is a stable situation right okay now the draft has come back to me uh, Matthew St okay let's see Gronkowski and Hurts understandable actually I don't understand that Kelsey's gonna be good guys he's gonna be good okay and then Mike Evans obviously Sean McCoy Jimmy Garoppolo here comes the quarterback <laughs> being taken Joe Mixon in the fourth I still don't like Joe Mixon guys I don't know what it is he just didn't perform well last season um they didn't give him the job even after Jeremy Hill went down they were hesitant to give him more than you know 13 carries a game running backs need 20 you know touches it's tough I don't know anyways Matthew Stafford Doug Baldwin Tyreek Hill okay wow so it's come back, and T.Y. is still on the board. Um, it's kind of hard to pass on him here, right? Uh, I like the quarterbacks that are left. I think I can come back and grab some. Um, currently, how m there are seven quarterbacks that have been taken off the board. Um, worst case scenario, I get screwed, and I have to take, you know, my Matt Ryan, Jared Goff. Big whoops. That's a fantastic duo for, uh, for me, to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and take T.Y. Hilton. Start to build my wide receiver core here. Um, and he's a good wide receiver one. You know, um, last time he played with Andrew Luck in 2016, he was, if I'm not mistaken, a top three wide receiver. Jordy Nelson was number one. Mike Evans was up there with, like, number two. Um, and there was Antonio Brown in the conversation, and T.Y. was up there. So he was top five. Um, okay, so what happened after my draft pick? Kenyon Drake, who, in, you know, speaking of Kenyon Drake, real quick, um, they brought in Frank Gore, right? Last year, they had J.J. and, and uh, Kenyon Drake. And Jamal, who, who's that? William, is it Williams? I don't remember. There's some other guy that's on that team that doesn't deserve carries. Regardless, um, Kenyon Drake was supposed to be the starter this year, right? I mean, all things is showing that he's going to be. But why would they bring in Frank Gore, Frank Gore, um, who had a really good season last year, 980 yards, you know, nine touchdowns. I mean, he was saying RB2, plain and simple, almost getting up there uh, for the RB1 conversation. And um, they brought in yesterday Jeremy Langford, who used to play for the Bears. Like, what are we doing here? 
Anyway, uh, regardless, let's go ahead see what else was drafted. Cooper, Kelsey, Robinson. Kelsey in 4-9? Okay, not bad. Uh, Derrick Henry, which I think is a little too early at this point because he's really not going to get any of that pass down work. Okay, and then the wide receivers are going. Mm, okay, I got to catch up. Josh Gordon, excuse me, Larry Fitzgerald, Jay Jai, Demaryius Thomas, Juju Smith, and Jarvis Landry. Okay, so I think right now is when I feel most comfortable taking a a quarterback um, just in case that they start. To, I'm going to go ahead and move. You know, honestly, tight ends, I'm, I'm probably going to wait for. Um, what do we see on the wide receiver list right here? Okay, so of the available wide receivers, what would I probably draft first? Golden Tate is a for sure 90 reception kind of guy. He's going to get up to 980 to 1,000 yards, five touchdowns a year. That's that's his baseline. He's going to perform that. Um, if he's injured, he'll do less, obviously, barring how many weeks he's out. And if he outperforms that, then goody for you. Alshon Jeffrey, you know, he is the number one target for that offense, but he just he really didn't perform last season. 57 receptions, 9 which were touchdowns. I think he can do better this year. Uh, Marvin Jones, you know, I I don't know. Is Marvin Jones a one-year wonder? Can he do it again with Kenny Dalladay coming back healthy? And then we got Brandon Cooks, who's a deep threat. Who that That's just a question mark. I think I'd rather have Cooper Cup on that offense. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with a quarterback as of right now. I really like Phillip Rivers um, consistently. So we're going to go ahead and fill up our first quarterback slot and see where this takes us, right? Okay. So I'm glad that – hey, we're back. Okay, I'm glad that um, I took a quarterback here because there went Jared Goff and Ben Roethlisberger. So I'm glad I picked that up before I was lost in the the mess of it, okay? So Alshon Jeffrey, Darius Geis in the fifth round, which, you know, he's – as the weeks go on, and Gruden keeps talking him up. His ADP is going to skyrocket, guys. And to be honest, being a two-down back, having this high of ADP, I mean, of the available running backs, right? I mean, <laughs> Alex, okay, you know what? To be honest, he might be a better option than Lamar Miller and Alex Collins. Lamar Miller, baseline, yeah, these guys are 1,000-yard running backs, right? So if you think the Darius guys can do that and you can, you think he'll do more, then go for it, yeah. I, I don't I don't see that as a problem, to be honest. Okay, because honestly, Alex Collins is kind of a two-down back also. Javorius Allen and Kenneth Dixon coming back this season will probably take some of his snaps. So, um, anyway, we're going to continue. Ben Roethlisberger went off the board. Marvin Jones, Brandon Cooks, Golden Tate, Chris Hogan, which I really like. If you watched my video a couple of weeks back about the suspension benefactors, talked about um, the fact that because Julian Mandelman is not going to be a part of that offense for the first four weeks, Chris Hogan is inheriting a lot of opportunity, a lot of targets, a lot of target share, and he's just going to be a dominant wide receiver in those first four weeks. And then from then on, it's up to um, just how good the combination of Julian Edelman and Tom Brady is because if they're not on the same page a little bit, Chris Hogan's going to have that extra um, – rapport with them for from the beginning of the season so Evan Ingram and Jared Goff right so do I want to take a second quarterback right now um of the second quarterbacks I would be investing in I think Matt Ryan is the best like it's it's hands down Matt Ryan's the best 10 of the okay so 10 teams out of the 12 have a quarterback right now okay let me go ahead and expand this quarterback list um I cannot believe Blake Bortles is still 21. Behind Trubisky, that's so upsetting. I don't understand that, to be honest. But anyway, um, as of right now, I've got my running backs. I've got my wide receivers. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to tight ends. Greg Olson, Jimmy Graham, Delaney Walker, Kyle Rudolph. I like all those options. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and reach for a tight end as of right now because I think I want to build more depth within my wide receiver core. But I don't really like what I'm seeing at the wide receiver position. I like everything down here at the you know 35 and below because I think those are high end or sorry they're high end RB I mean wide receiver threes that can get to wide receiver two range and they're they're at a good value if you just wait on them. So as of right now, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to take um, Matt Ryan. So I went double quarterback these last two rounds. So. What do we look? I mean, we're looking at a pretty good team, right? But, okay, I just made a 
Number one mistake that you should never make in fantasy. Okay. And I didn't realize I made that mistake. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to sit. Ah, oh, man, I don't like that. Okay. You see up here, there's a revert pick option. I'm going to have to revert my last pick. Now, why did I do that, right? Matt Ryan has the exact same bye week as Phillip Rivers. Now, unless I stack two quarterbacks on my bench, right? Um, I don't have, I'll have one quarterback in a super flex in week eight, right? That's, that's a little rough, right? I don't know if I want to uh, leave a quarter, you know, use another bench spot for a quarterback if I don't have to, right? So let me look at these uh, quarterback situations and see, is there any other options that I want to uh, think about drafting? As of right now, let's see here. Hmm. You know what? We're just going to go with them. I like Matt Ryan. Maybe I'll just, I'll forfeit week eight, to be honest. I'll forfeit week eight. So what happened after? Um, but yeah, just understand that, that, if you do have two quarterbacks on the same bye week, you're pretty much going to forfeit that week unless you have two quarterbacks sitting in your bench. Anyway, so after my pick, Robbie Anderson. Really? Robbie Anderson went? What? That's a reach. Okay. <laughs> um, Greg Olson. Alex Collins. Uh, Sammy Watkins. Shot Penny. Shot Penny. Uh, <laughs> Corey Davis. Jimmy Graham. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get it. We understand. A uh, good amount of players are drafted, okay? We get it. So where do I want to go here? I already have my two quarterbacks. I need to start building more wide receiver depth, right? So of the available wide receivers, we got Garcon, we got Woods, we got Funches, we have Jameson Crowder, okay. So, and then we have some running backs, right? Do I want to build more running back depth? As of right now, I think these three guys are going to start on a weekly basis for me. Um, and then I'll go ahead and build more depth with, like, people with like Tevin Coleman ability and Chris Thompson and you know that kind of idea so as of right now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take Devin Funches I think Devin Funches um in the you know in the at least this season is going to be the number one wide receiver for this offense um yes they have DJ Moore there but I don't think DJ Moore is going to be able to come in right away and produce at a high enough level to take over that number one receiving spot I think Devin Funches has that on lock so Kyle Rudolph is the, the highest rated tight end on the board as of right now. What happened after I drafted Funches? Uh, okay, Mark Ingram, which is decent. Wide receivers left, right, and center. Um, Ronald Jones, Alex Smith, Lamar Miller, and Jamison Crowder. So, you know what? I think I need to go ahead and grab um, my tight end, my favorite tight end this coming season, Kyle Rudolph. Um, I like the Vikings. I don't know. The Vikings, they, they look pretty good. So, what happened after that selection? quarterbacks running backs wide receivers quarterbacks you know as expected as you can probably assume so where does that leave me that leaves me right with a roster that has no wide receiver three within the first what is that eight picks okay that's understandable i can go ahead and supplement that with one of these available players and they'll end up being a wide receiver three for me for the rest of the season right so I am not worried about that. As of right now, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and pick up Tevin Coleman. Okay. Great wide receiver. I mean, excuse me. Great running back depth. He is a handcuff to a good, you know, offense that can score on a weekly basis. And as of right now, um, just in case somebody gets hurt, somebody has a bye week, he's my guy to go in. So after I selected Tevin Coleman, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, running back, you know, all of the above, and then a defense went in the 10th round. Okay, that's crazy. So, um, Calvin Benjamin is our number one suggested pick. I'm not ever touching Calvin Benjamin. He was talking crack about Cam Newton the other day, saying Cam Newton's not an accurate thrower. If I had an accurate thrower uh, while I was on the Panthers, I'd have been way better. Okay, blah, blah, blah. You cry about it more. You know, they. if I'm not mistaken, they went to the Super Bowl when Calvin Benjamin was out for the entire season. So you tell me what was wrong with that scenario. Anyway, so as of right now, I'm looking at the potential picks, right? Running back-wise, um, Marlon Max, okay, but I'm not going to go ahead and pick him up. I like, oh, man, Duke Johnson's, nah. 
You know, to be honest, with the running back depth as of right now, I kind of almost like the the guys down here, like Naheem Hines, Matt Breida, um, Blau Pal, because, you know, I already have four pretty good running backs that I can be confident about on a weekly basis. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get that wide receiver three of mine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. Rashad Matthews, you know, he's he's not even healthy right now, which is, is tough. You know, he hasn't practiced at all this camp. So that's kind of a sketchy thing, kind of looking into that. So to be honest, hmm, the struggle is real here. I went for three running backs. My wide receivers will suffer. It is not a big deal, though. So we're going to go ahead. I think I might have to go Rashad Matthews. I mean, Alan Hearns, you know, I don't even know how much he's going to be able to produce with this offense. He's never been a wide receiver one. He's going to be covered by, you know, the wide receiver ones of the division. Just their division, the NFC East. I mean, um, Ronald Darby. Um, what's his name? The cat that was from the Panthers. Um, Josh Norman. I mean, <laughs> Janoris Jenkins. He's gonna be he's gonna be matched up with some really tough um, corners this coming season, which you know I don't see him doing great against. Is Blake Bortles still on the board? Where's Blake Bortles? Blake Bortles is gone before. Der- oh, Derek Carr is getting <laughs> burnt out here. Okay, so and I don't you know I might have gone DJ Moore, but I'm not really a DJ Moore kind of guy as of right now because I went Funches. So we're gonna go ahead and take Rashad Matthews. Um, if you know. All things go well, he becomes healthy. He can be a he's gonna be the number two receiver of that offense. So hopefully, you know, he gets a little bit more opportunity here and there. The offense and Mariota is not as trash as it was last year and he ends up playing well. So uh let's move on. I want more running back depth, to be honest. You know, actually, hmm, let's see, wide receiver wise, I might have to pick somebody here, but I can wait. Chris Thompson, Isaiah Coel, Aaron Jones. You know what? <laughs> My God. <laughs> They're terrible. Okay, so as of right now, probably who do I want as my third quarterback? I think I want Joe Flacco, to be honest. It's kind of a weird pick, but I'm going to go with Joe Flacco as my third quarterback. But we're not going to pick him right now because I can wait on him. Um, so until then, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead. Ooh, let's see. I, could get John, I like John Ross a lot this year. They just cut... Um, was it Brandon Tate, who was the number one wide receiver because John Ross has now stepped up. He's arrived. He finally is going to produce for this team um, with that disgustingly 4-2 speed. Um, as of right now, I'm looking at this wide receiver bunch. You know, it, you know, it doesn't really matter who I draft because they're all going to be okay by the end of the season. They're not going to be amazing. They're going to be okay. So of the guys that I really like right now, I'm probably going to go with Tyrell Williams. Yeah, I like Tyrell Williams way more than than these dudes. Josh Doxson, no, I'm not interested in that. I cannot subscribe to that. Guy. Josh Doxson's still there. You see, he's not that good, guys. <laughs> um, why? Okay, so we built a little bit of wide receiver depth right there. I mean, it's not really depth, but it's, it's something, right? Um, running back-wise... I don't. I mean, I'm not going to pick up a Giovanni Bernard or a Devontae Brooker. I do like Ty, Mong- uh, Ty Montgomery and Bilal Powell. Um, and as I said, Naheem Hines and like Matt Breida down here. So I can wait for those guys. Maybe we build. You know what? No, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take one of these guys. Let's go with Ty Montgomery. Um, I think Ty Montgomery. If you watched uh, a couple videos back, you know, with the absence of Aaron Jones in those first couple weeks. The Packers like using a receiving back, and he's going to be that guy. And if worst can, uh, worst case scenario, if he doesn't end up winning the starting running back job, he was a wide receiver, right? He can come in, he can play a little bit of a uh, slot for the for the Packers and still have some fantasy value. Okay, so where do we want to go here? We still have Joe Flacco on the board, which is great. Um, wide receiver-wise, I mean... It's looking thin, but, you know, we still got Michael Gallup and we still got John Ross sitting down in the depths. I'm not really sure if I... I'm not going to go with Deshaun Jackson. I think Chris Godwin is the better option with that offense um, as of right now. So looking at my bench, 
I think I want to build just a little bit more wide receiver depth. So we're gonna I'm literally going to reach for John Ross because I think he's gonna have a good season this year. Or at least he'll be productive enough so where I can start him a couple games from my bench. Okay, so maybe it's time to take a quarterback. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna take Joe Flacco. Um yes, he was terrible last year, but this year he's got what, three new wide receivers, got a brand new tight end. Uh, Marshall Yond is coming back to shore up that offensive line, and he's got um, he's got a backup that he has to worry about, right? Last year they, they drafted Matt, uh, Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs, and Alex Smith had his best season. Joe Flacco can probably do the same. You just got to light a, a fire underneath them and get him going. Um, so what happened when I just drafted, okay? Ricky Seals Jones, Eric Ebron, Case Keenan, Naheem Hines, that was one of my running backs, blah, 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 blah. Matt Breida went, oh, my Amble Al Pal. And Michael Gallup. Literally, literally all of the... <laughs> my God. All of them went within a one-round range, but it's okay. I shored up my third quarterback because I don't want <laughs> Sam Bradford uh, being that guy. So we're going to go ahead. Um, let's see here. What do we want to do with depth? You know, Chris Ivory could be good, but I don't think that... Um, there hasn't been any news on LeSean McCoy getting suspended anytime soon. Um, so that's just a question mark in itself. So I think I'm going to go with Chris Godwin here. He had a really good end of the season last year, and he could potentially come out guns a-blazing with <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick and figure it out. Uh, okay, let's see here. Wide receivers, okay, Cole Beasley, whatever, blah, 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 running backs. Okay, so what are we, what are we looking at here? We're in the 16th round. Um, there's an available, what, 19 roster spots, if I'm not mistaken? Um, let's see. We have 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, and then we have 8. So, yeah, it's 19 roster spots. So, we've got three more picks left in the bank. i got to use two on a kicker uh, in defense. So, this is going to be my last player. Uh, let me go look at the kickers in defense real quick. Um, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care about kickers in defense. I could care less. I'm just going to draft whatever it tells me to um, because a lot of the leagues I play in just don't even use kickers and defenses anymore. So as of right now, what do we have on our bench? To be honest, I think I need another tight end just in case. So I'm looking at tight ends. I'm going to go. Ooh, ben Watson's still there. Hmm. Hayden Hurst is still there. Whew. Hmm. I like the idea of Hayden Hurst. Maybe I get to stack Joe Flacco, Hayden Hurst. Let's go with that. It's a little bit of a low-key pick, but I don't mind. Um, Denver defense, sure, I'll take it. Uh, I get another pick? No. I got 19 rounds. Why would I have another bench spot? How many? I put eight bench slots, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. 8 plus 11, it's 19. I don't understand what the heck happened here. We gotta, um, I'm just going to go ahead and draft a kicker. So, uh, actually, well, I don't understand. Is my pick coming back? I'm assuming my pick's coming back, but then again, I don't 100% know. So, we're just going to, I guess, be safe here. Go with Steven Goskowski. I don't know. This end of the draft bullshit is just, it's pissing me off. I don't understand what's going on here. If I end up having another pick, I'll be surprised. Oh, I will have another pick. Okay, that's fine. I picked up the best kicker in the league, though. <laughs> um, the last pick of my draft, where am I going with it? Let's see here. Um, Quincy and Nunwa. Corey Coleman just got traded. Trent Taylor is eh. Baron Marshall's bleh. These wide receivers don't look great. You know, Jermaine Curse is probably the best-looking wide receiver there because I don't think Tyrod Taylor going to that organization is going to do anything for them. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, hmm. Let's go ahead and... What, which one of these running backs do I really want? Like, really want? Is there anything? Mike Gilsley's never playing again. He'll be in the depths. You might even get cut next week. Um... I mean, what are these running backs? I mean, I know who these guys are. I know every single one of these guys, but none of them look appealing at all. This is why it's, like, so tough. So I'm kind of looking for a rookie. 
um, that I can kind of just wait on. But there's not. Okay, okay. There's one rookie I see. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go pick up Boston Scott. Because I have Alvin Kamara. Just in case he gets hurt or some shit. That's my... Boom. Oh my god. What kind of grade did I just receive? That's horseshit. I'm going to say that's BS. <laughs> Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Jordan Howard. First three picks. We hit him with the T.Y. Hilton. Then we went double quarterbacks with the Rivers and Matt Ryan combo. To then end out with Funches and Rashad Matthews. Built a bench that was kind of dictated by the draft. Um, to be honest, I love Tevin Coleman. He's a great running back to put on your bench um, because, uh, you know, the way I see it, best case scenario is that Devontae Freeman gets hurt and he becomes a starting quarterback. Worst case scenario, he's going to be an RB2 by the end of the year. Tyrell Williams, uh, I like the stack with him and Phillip Rivers. Um, other than that, when Hunter Henry went down, there was a bunch of wide receivers. I mean, wide receiver opportunity that was opened up because you know they don't really have a tight end there, and Antonio Gaines isn't re-signing. So I think Tyrell Williams becomes that next uh, guy to step up and pick up some receptions, especially when Keenan Allen wasn't healthy. Tyrell Williams was a thousand-yard receiver um, in 2016. Um, Tyrell Montgomery for the first couple weeks, it's pretty much a test. Worst case scenario, he doesn't end up. I drop him, right? But I like. The idea, because the Packers need a receiving back. That's what they dictate on. They, they they rely upon receivers to catch the ball out of the backfield. John Ross is going to be the number two wide receiver of that uh, Bengals offense. And I think he's going to be decent. I think he's going to be decent. And a lot of these guys at the end of this these rounds, they're gambles, right? But I like the the opportunity here. Joe Flacco with the fire underneath his, his buns. Hopefully, we'll turn everything around this coming season. Chris Godwin, Hayden Hurst, and Boston Scott. Boston Scott's pretty much my um, my handcuff for the first couple weeks. Otherwise, I don't really believe in heavy handcuff situations. Hayden Hurst, Chris Godwin. Hayden Hurst is because of the Joe Flacco stack. Um, and Chris Godwin is because I think he was just a better option than Deshaun Jackson. Um, otherwise, you know, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Um, probably later in this week. Man, I was the only guy to take <laughs> a running back in that round. Uh, other than that, pretty much, thank you for watching. Let's see what these other teams built before I, I send us off. Right? Look how many. Okay, so this team, two quarterbacks, first four rounds. Hmm. Two quarterbacks, first four rounds. Or first, yeah, first four, four first three. Okay. First two rounds. Goodness. I mean, I like what we went with here. I went for that stable, right? I went for being able to rely on my running backs to carry my team. And that's hopefully what it's going to end up being, right? And I also got two quarterbacks that I'm pretty happy with. I think both of these guys can potentially shove for that uh, low-end quarterback one situation, which is all I need them to do, right? With the likes of T.Y. Hilton, I think he'll have a big year. You know, Kyle Rudolph's there. My wide receivers just are, they're definitely a little weak, right? They're not, I'm not going to say that they're strong, right? Because Devin Funches is going to be a wide receiver too, right? And that's why he's my second wide receiver. I just need Rashad Matthews, or I need Tyrell Williams, or I need um, John Ross, Chris Godwin to step up for that number three spot, right? I think that number three spot will probably be um, a position that I, I try to go and pick up off waivers or... You know, one of the guys that I've drafted that I've entrusted is going to end up picking up that spot for the the next couple of weeks um, or the first couple of weeks of the season. Otherwise, Rashad Matthews, I like him, right? If if that Davis kid who was drafted last season ends up not being healthy, which which is Davis? Let me let me go find this Davis kid. Now Davis, Corey Davis. There we go. Let's see Corey Davis' deal is. Right? Can we click on this name? No. Okay. It's not working. Worst case, okay, never mind. Anyway, but if Corey Davis doesn't end up, you know, being that number one wide receiver that the Titans expected him to be, Delaney Walker's going to get a little bit of reception. You know, obviously, Deion Lewis will catch the ball out of the backfield. But then it's Rashad Matthews all the way, right? Rashad Matthews has been there for the last couple seasons. He's proven that he can be the number one wide receiver for um, Marcus Mariota. So 
hopefully that would end up turning out the way this draft wanted it to. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Again, we're one subscriber away. If you made it this far and you haven't subbed, please do so to get more content on a weekly basis. I'm bringing out more you know, mock drafts such as such, more videos on strategies. I appreciate everybody watching. Um, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys next time. See you.